Hello guys, welcome back. This is Saifuddin Ghanizada with another tutorial from tech for all In this video, I will show you how you can install and configure a new DHCP server in Windows Server 2022 Standard Edition. I will show you how you can create an IP scope, how you can reserve a specific IP address, how you can exclude an IP from a DHCP scope, and how you can enable the MAC filtering in your network. Let's start. First of all, open the server manager. First, we will install the DHCP server role and then we will configure the DHCP server. To install the DHCP server role, click on the Add Roles and Features. A new Add Roles and Features wizard will be open to you. Click on the Next button. From the installation type, select role-based or feature-based installation and click on the next button. Select the first option, which is select a server from the server pool and select the server which you want to install the DHCP server on. If you have multiple servers, you have to choose the right one. But as I have only one server, it is by default selected. Click on the next button. From the server's rule menu, you have to select the DHCP server. Whenever you select the DHCP server, a new Add Rules and Features wizard will be opened, which says the following tools needs to be installed to install a DHCP server. Click on the Add Features button and click on the Next button. By default, DHCP server will select all the necessary features that it needs. But if you want to add some extra features, you can select it from here. After you have selected the features, click on the Next button. In this page, it gives you some information about DHCP. It's OK. Click the Next button. Here you can see your selections, that which rules and features you have selected to be installed. After you have confirmed your selection, click on the Install button to proceed to the installation. After the DHCP server is installed, click on the close button to close this page. You can see the DHCP in the rules and servers group, which means that DHCP is installed. Also, there is a caution button on the notifications, which says that you need to complete the DHCP configuration. Click on the complete DHCP configuration link. It will launch the DHCP post installation configuration wizard. In the DHCP post installation configuration wizard, you need to do two things. First, you need to create two groups, which is DHCP administrators and DHCP users. And the second one is that you need to authorize DHCP server on the target computer or on the client's machine if the computers are joined to the domain. Click on the next button. Now you need to specify a credential, which will be used to authorize the DHCP server in Active Directory domain services. As I haven't created any extra user, by default, it has selected the administrator account. But in case, if you have any super user, you can use an alternative credentials and specify it in here. I will go with the first option with the administrator account and click on the commit button. Now it has created the security groups and also authorized the DHCP server. The post installation configuration wizard is done. Click on the close button to close this page. Click on the tools menu and select DHCP from the tools menu. Select the DHCP server and select the IPv4. As you can see that there isn't any scope created. Now you need to create an IP scope. To create any scope, right click on the IPv4 and select new scope from the right click menu. 
the new eScope wizard will be open to you. Click the next button. Now you need to define a name and a description for your eScope. After you have provided the name and description, click on the next button. Here you need to specify the start IP address and the end IP address. I will go with the class C IP address. After you have provided the start and end IP address, and also you have provided the length, the subnet mask will be automatically calculated. Click on the next button. If you want to add exclusions, you can do it in here. For example, I will exclude the IP address from 1 up to 50 for the servers. Click on the Add button to add the exclusion. Here you can see the excluded address range, which is from 192.168.1371 to 192.168.1375. Click on the Next button. Here you can provide the least duration, that how long a client can use a specific IP address from this scope. By default, it has given the 8 days of lease. I will go with the default one. Click on the Next button. In this page, you have two options. Whether you want to configure the DNS server, WNS server, default gateways, or you will do it later. Let's configure the default gateways in DNS server too. So select the first option and click on the Next button. Provide the default gateway. In my case, it is 192.168.1371. Click on the Add button. The default gateway is added. If you have multiple gateways, you can enter multiple gateways address in here. Let's add another gateway too. After you have added the gateways, click on the Next button. Now you need to specify the parent domain name that your clients will use on your network to use it for the DNS name resolution. As I have installed the DHCP server in the domain controller and the DNS is also in the same server, it has detected the parent domain name and it has detected the DNS server address. But in your case, it might be different. If you have configured the DHCP server in a separate server, you need to specify the parent name, the server name of the DNS and the IP address of DNS. After you have provided these informations, Click on the Next button. If you have a server, you can specify the server name and the server address in here. In my case, I don't have any WNS server, so I will skip this option and click on the Next button. Now it asks you whether you want to activate the scope or you will do it later. I won't activate the scope now, so I will do it later. I will select the second option and click on the Next button. Click on the Finish button. Now you have successfully generated the DHCP scope. To activate the scope, select the scope, right click on it, and select activate from the right click menu. Or just select the scope and click on this icon. Now let's reserve a specific IP address for a specific computer. Click on the reservations. To add a reservation, select reservations under the scope, right click on it, and select New Reservation from the right-click menu. Provide a reservation name. I will reserve an IP address for the director's computer. Provide the IP address. Provide the reservation name. Now you need to specify the MAC address of your client. Now if you want to add a description, you can do it in here. From the support type, it is better to select both. Click on the Add button to add this reservation. Click on the Close button to close it. Expand the reservations. Here you can see that we have reserved an IP address for the director's computer. By default, it has detected the gateway, the DNS, 
and the domain name. If you want to add an NTP server for your computers, you can do it from the scope options. Select the scope options, right click on it, and select configure options from the right click menu. As you can see, by default, some of the options are selected, which is default gateway and DNS domain name. Let's add a time server for this scope. Check the time server option. Enter the time server's name. And enter the IP address of the time server. And click on the add button. The time server is added. Click on apply button and click on OK button. Now, all of your client computers will be using the time server too. If you want to enable MAC filtering in your network, which will add an extra layer of security to your network, you can do it under the filters menu. Expand it. Here you can see that you have two options, allow and deny. If you enable the allow option under filters menu, all those MAC addresses that you add in this list can access your network. But if you enable the deny option under filters menu, all the MAC addresses listed in here cannot access your network. I will go with the first option, which is allow. It is better to provide the MAC addresses of those computers that needs to be connected to your computer. Select the allow option, right click on it, and select enable from the right click menu. Now, all you need to do is to right click on the allow option and select new filter. Provide the MAC address that you want to allow it to access your network and give a description for the MAC address. Click on the add button to add this MAC address. Now, the computer which has this MAC address can access your network. But if you want to use the deny option, first you have to enable it. Right click on it and select enable from the right click menu. To add a new MAC address under the deny option, right click on it and select new filter. Provide the MAC address, provide the description for it. And click on the add button. Here you can see that it says the same address is already added in the allow option. I will edit the MAC address, click on the add button. Now this computer cannot access the network. And that's all for today. If you need any help, comment down below and I will get back to you as soon as possible. Don't forget to give the video a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Press the subscribe button to stay tuned with the future upcoming videos. I will catch you very soon with another one. Till then, have a nice time.